Guys, welcome to AFC Curtis. I'm, of course, your ho host, Curtis, here today. And we're joined by a returnee to the show, friend of the show, Mr. Maury Doner, on his new club. Look at that. He's wearing it right there on his sweater there. It's HFX Wanderers, Maury Doner. How's it going, Maury? Hey, man. Thanks for having me again. I know I was here before, but it's always a pleasure. Yeah, perfect. And I, I love having you on. You're a great guy. And you're, you have, you're in the news recently. You you just recently signed a few weeks back there with the HFX Wanderers out on the East Coast. Uh, could you just explain how Stephen Hart kind of sold the move to Halifax to you? Yeah, man. Um, well, actually, uh, I'll be honest about um, I had aspirations to go to Europe um, after the season with York. And um, with my contract and everything, I just felt like for me, um, at my, my time and my age and my experience, I, you know, I want to play in Europe. I think I'm at a perfect age for that and experience. So um, I was... I was having a few opportunities to to have some connections with uh, some teams and there was some good dialogue there. And I know York released the, the statement uh, on the weekend and, you know, Stephen reached out to me uh, Monday morning and said, you know, would you be interested in coming to Halifax? And of course, it was something that I always was thinking about because, you know, the adding games, they were played so well and, actually had ties with Steven before that. So he, he, I think there was mutual respect there as, um, as a player and a coach. So it was just about finding, uh, you know, the right spot for me. I, I want to win. I want to play. I, I want to develop. And um, with COVID and everything, there was a few complications with some opportunities that I had. But, um, you know, Steven was straightforward with me and he wanted me in right away. So it, it made my job a lot easier and I felt I really appreciated. Yeah, and you, you mentioned those ties with Stephen from before there. Uh, you did do an interview recently over on camphill.ca. I believe it was with uh, Marty Thompson there, who does fantastic work over there. But you mentioned there that you, before the CPL even started, late 2018 there, you're in conversation with York 9 FC, which is, of course, now York United FC. Uh, and, of course, HFX Wanderers. You end up going and signing with the York 9 team. Could you explain that process a little bit more and maybe why at the time you decided to stay maybe in your home province of Ontario? Yeah, well, I was actually playing League One at the time at Aurora, and uh, Jimmy obviously has connections through Aurora. He coached me there in the past, and he actually came out and watched a few games of mine and just said that, you know, I'm playing really well and that there'd be an opportunity for a CPL team, and he'd probably be the coach, so, um, you know, to, to be ready for that. And uh, I was in touch with Steven as well. He, he got in touch with me uh, over the summer and was really interested in a chance to bring me to Halifax. Uh, he watched some of my game video and he really liked me as a player and he wanted me to be one of his fullback options. Um, when the season finished, uh, League One, I was, you know, just just waiting on, you know, what was happening and I actually went uh, to try out with York for a few weeks and uh, was really just, you know, I, I wanted to play. I, I love football and just wanted to be a part of any organization that would have me. And um, I think Jimmy just wanted to represent Aurora and wanted me to, to be a part of the team. And luckily I impressed, but, you know, just just having that relationship with Steven as well over the last two years, I think, um, you know, he sees me grow as a player and as a person in this league to establish myself. So it was something that, you know, I look at him and I look at his playing style and the way that he likes to do things. And I think it fits me as a person. So. It, it, it all worked out in the end, and I'm just happy that, you know, you know he had the chance that uh, to bring me out here. Now, you, you spent the last two seasons there with York 9, being coached by Jamie, playing on that system there. Was there maybe, was there maybe like a moment in time, maybe in this past 12 months period, where you kind of realized maybe it is time to move on from York 9? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I had such a good first year, and um, to be honest, I played... Um, more games than I thought I would and I did things that I didn't think I would so it was just a win-win for me just to have that experience over the first season of being a pro um, you know I won the player of the year and got um, first team for the 11 so it was it was something that I was really proud about um, I think for me personally the team we had high expectations going into the island games and to be honest, we didn't really uh, live up to those expectations. I think the playing uh, of our team wasn't wasn't uh, quality, and we just lacked in certain areas. Um, we didn't show up at the right time. So for me, just 
you know, I took a few weeks after the tournament. Um, my, I heard guys might be wanting to leave as well. And for me, you know, I, I started football late, so I want to play at the highest level possible. I want to win. I want to win trophies. I want to get to the highest level. So um, I think York was going a different route. Um, they were going with a lot of younger players, uh, rebranding and just focusing on uh, younger options. And um, for me, I, I, I see Halifax and I see other teams and that's an interest for me because, you know, I, I just want to be in the best position possible to be successful. So um, for me, it was just about, you know, getting to that next level and just trying to have a system that works for me. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to have a fresh start, really. It was something that I thought about a lot over a few months and just thought it was something... You know, in life and football, you get to a certain point where you need that fresh start. So I'm happy to be here, of course. I, I got here early because I want to have a fresh start, you know, as soon as possible and start my quarantine and get, get training and work for the next season. Yeah, I mean, that's, that was such an interesting point of view, I guess, from, from your perspective. Is you see other players, you hear maybe other players are kind of going to be leaving to another club or to Europe. Uh, you start to see the rebrand come, come forward, a bunch of young players come in. Uh, so, but I think you made a really good choice in joining, you know, HFX Wonders this is a team, like you said, that went to the finals last year. This is a, this is a championship caliber team right now coming in 2021, but last thing here on York nine, what would be your one favorite memory? If you had to choose just one, what was, what would be your favorite memory from your two years there with York United? Uh, I think my professional debut was the most important thing for me. Um, I know it was, it was something new for me. I was you know, frustrated because I just wanted to play. I wanted to show myself. And I just remember talking to a few players and they said, don't worry, more, you're going to get your chance. Just keep working hard in training. And yeah, that's it, man. Just trying to, trying to stay humble, trying to work hard and just do what I love. And eventually the time came and, you know, I, I just wanted to show people what I had, show to myself that I could play at this level. And it, it came and I took it with both hands. So it's something that's always going to be important to me. And I'm, I'm so grateful that Jimmy gave me the opportunity that I could prove myself in this league and make a name for myself. So, you know, it's, it's all good things. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. You can't have a career with that debut, right? So uh, now that you move on here, you're in the HFX Wanderers Club now. What, uh, what are you most looking forward to, to doing as a Wanderer in 2021? Oh, I think, fingers crossed, we can uh, have fans in the stadium. You know, I'm hoping that, um, everything gets under control and things get better. So we can have fans, you know, that's obviously one of the reasons I, I came to, to here because, you know, the fans are so passionate. Everyone loves the team. Um, you know, it's a special place to play in, a special place to, on my travels when I played there uh, two, three times, you know, it was just one of those games where it's just different, you know, there's your heart's racing a little quicker and there's so many people trying to get under your skin as an opposition player. So, you know, just to have that support behind me and to play with these new team members is something that I'm really looking forward to. I think there's a few players in particular like Joao and a lot of attacking players that suit the way that I like to play. So I think I can bring, you know, a different version of myself in the past and just, you know, work with Steve and work with the other players. And like you said, this is, this is a team that wants to win, a team that was was close to winning last year. So I think we're, we're well on our way. We just need to start playing together and, you know, get the chemistry down. But no, everything's perfect. Yeah, no, I mean, those, those fans, like, I guess two years ago now, it was 2019. But yeah, that was definitely the place I feel to be in 2019 of any of the CPL stadiums. No disrespect to anybody else, but the Wanderers ground, it was rocking every single game. There was no nights off there. So definitely a fun atmosphere to be a part of. Uh, in terms of training this off season, like what are what are you trying to do now this off season? Maybe to change things up. Uh, what techniques are you maybe putting into your game this off season in terms of training for next season? Uh, what are you doing this off season? Yeah, well, actually, I went home to Collingwood for a few months, but um, as soon as I signed for Halifax, you know, I, I told them I, I want to be out as soon as possible. You know, I want to start working hard. I want to be involved with the team as much as I can. So, you know, I came out here January 1st and served my quarantine. And, um, you know, before that, I was just running every day, working, working in the basement because the gyms were closed. But, you know, now the cases here are very good. And, 
um, I have access to a gym. Uh, us players, there's six of us here now, so we're training um, with a couple of younger kids as well. So, you know, we're getting started. And this is just really a chance for us to get to know each other right now. I know a couple of players are going to be coming in the next few weeks. So this is something that, you know, I, I want to be here because this is a great place to be and I want to work hard like I always have. But now I just want to get to know everyone and get to know tendencies, get to know the way they are. And as people, you know, we get to know each other more and we'll understand each other on the pitch. So right now I'm just working hard in the gym and just working on my cardio and I'm happy enough that we can we can get into the facility and work on fitness as well. Has COVID impacted your training this off season in any way? Um, for me, not so much. Um, I do a lot of running outside, so um, it was snowy a little where I'm from, but it wasn't so bad to be honest. I think I think for the majority of my career, um, you know, I had to go outside of my comfort zone to really train because I'm from a small town. We didn't have a lot of facilities, so. For me, it's no different than any other uh, year. You know, I, I can, all I need is really a ball and a wall and there's a school by my house. So I just was, you know, doing some technical stuff with a couple of mates there. And just, you know, also after the season being in the Island Games, it's a chance to just uh, take a break, you know, emotionally. It was, it was a very tough uh, experience there, you know, being stuck in a hotel, you know, games every three, four days. So you know, having that mental break is really important for you as a footballer and just hitting that reset button, you know. It's a, it's a time to go again. And, you know, starting in a, in a few weeks, we're going to be, you know, wrapping things up. And come come March, we're going to be every day. So, you know, you, you take the rest and you, you figure out what works and what doesn't, and we, we get going. Yeah, no, ho and hopefully we get those, we get that season underway, hopefully sooner than later. But uh, besides just training this off season, is there anything else you've been kind of up to this off season? You've been binge watching any shows, playing a FIFA, anything like that? I gave up my video games because I was too addicted in the past. Um, but I've actually been playing a lot of chess recently. Um, I actually played a lot in high school and in my teens uh, growing up uh, with my dad and um, obviously, I watched the Queen's Gambit, so yeah. I can't say that that got me into chess, but it got me back into it like I used to be. So I'm playing a lot of chess. Honestly, just reading, trying to just keep the mind stimulated. I haven't been to school in a very long time, so just trying to, you know. But now there's there's a lot of things open. Everything's open here, so, um, you know, I've gone downtown a few times and gone to a few cafes, so that's something that I'm really into as well. Yeah, and we've been we've talked before the show, and we've talked over like the last year, just texting back and forth and stuff. And that's something that I find that you are really interested in is maybe starting your own cafe. I think you mentioned it to me in the past. What kind of got you uh, in that kind of interest of that field, and possibly even venture down there as as possible an owner of a cafe in the future? Yeah, actually, uh, my parents growing up, um, there's a a new cafe that opened up um, downtown Collingwood, and my parents were the first ones to be. Um, to try that coffee there they were just opening a pop-up shop and just wanted to get their brand out there so we all went there and it was it was great coffee and they opened up a big um, big store after that and they're you know very well known in the area for having the best coffee and I'm really close with the owner so um, you know he's always helping me out he, he's a really big soccer fan as well so um, you know, we, we help each other out. He helps me out with coffee sometimes. And it's a really, uh, I really love the atmosphere of coffee shops. You can really tell a lot about a person um, by the way they set it up. You know, whenever I go places, I always like to try different drinks in, in different cities. And, you know, coffee is just something that um, it's really important in my life. I like to, I like to drink it every day. And, you know, there's a lot, it's like wine, you know, there's a lot of different tastes, there's a lot of different ways that you can drink it, and just, it's a, it's a communication thing as well, you, you meet people, and you get to talk to your friends, and, you know, I've, I've just been lucky enough to, you know, have some guidance, I've actually started um, making coffee on my own, um, with a, an espresso machine, so, you know, I'm trying to learn the craft as well, because I think it's important, but I'd love to own a coffee shop one day. I think it would be great to have kind of a modern style, you know, with TVs and soccer, yeah. soccer stuff around the whole place. So, no, I think it's, uh, I think it's be something that would be a good challenge for me after my career. What's your favorite type of coffee? 
I think uh, cappuccino is my favorite. I don't like to drink it a lot because I don't want really like to drink milk. Um, I like to keep away from dairy products, but um, cappuccino, you can't go wrong. Hear that? I wonder his fans, cappuccino, that's the way to Mori Donor's heart. <laughs> so other than that though, that's, that's it for interview questions, but we got one more thing here, if you're willing to do it with me, and it's, it's a game. I have a game now that I play, like to play with people I interview, and the game is called There Can Only Be One, and I'll just explain to you the game if you're down to play it, and that is I'll give you eight different football clubs, so kind of be paired up in kind of like a tournament bracket style, and you'll just pick the one out of the two that I'm going to give you. You're going to just pick the one you like the most. And then at the end of the, this bracket system, it will be down to one team. That's the team that you like the most. I you know what team I like, so... I know, but... You can't stop me here, but... But I'm here's the thing. It. Here, here's the thing, Maury. I didn't put them in the bracket, so they're not in this challenge. So you have to pick someone else. You have to pick okay, someone no else. Problem. Let's go. Oh, all right. So the, fir the first matchup here is PSG versus Liverpool. Of course, PSG, because United hate Liverpool. <laughs> Uh, next one here, Bayern Munich versus Barca. I'll give it to Bayern because of Davies. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, they're kind of Canada's German team now. Uh, Dortmund versus Napoli. Ooh, Dortmund. I like uh, Jaden Sancho. Yeah, yeah. Who doesn't, honestly? That guy's, that guy's money. At last match up here, the quarterfinals will be Arsenal versus Spurs. Mm, London Derby, eh? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to go Arsenal because I hate Harry, I hate Harry Kane. Uh -huh. He always scores against United, so <laughs> always scores against us. So I have a couple Arsenal uh, Arsenal friends as well, so I'll be nice to them here. And Manchester United, by the way, just miss out on the Sancho deals, miss out on the Harry Kane deals a few years ago. Listen, it's a, you can't win if you're a United fan. <laughs> okay, quarterfinals or sorry, semifinals now. PSG versus Bayern. Uh, PSG, because I think uh, they have a lot of quality players and they're always fun to watch. Yeah, no, they're definitely a fun, fun team to watch there. Uh, we got uh, Dortmund versus Arsenal. Dortmund, Haaland, golden boy. <laughs> okay, here we go, the finals. PSG versus Dortmund. Dortmund. Oh, there you go. There we go. We got uh, Maury's. There can only be one. So Dortmund's obviously a second favorite team behind Manchester United, of course. It's die diehard United. I like, like Jaden Sancho, man. He's he's uh, he's one of my favorite players to watch. I think he has it all. And obviously with the links with United, you know, kind of kind of it's in my heart. <laughs> Not knock on wood, eh? Uh, but anyway, thank you for, for coming on the show here today, Maury. Uh, thanks for playing the game too with me. Uh, it was a lot of fun having you on, and we definitely have to have you on again later this year. Yes, man. It's always a pleasure. I hope everything is good, and we'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon, Maury. Have good luck this season.